Hello everyone and welcome back to Sleepless Ninja. We're going to look at Big Rush Dog's new kernel update. Um, this is a spectacular update that introduces a new overclocking of 1.7 GHz. Now Big Rush believes this is going to be kind of the last increase. He says you really really can't push the zoom any further but honestly 1.7 GHz on something that used to be 1 GHz that's phenomenal. Now um, for those of there out there who are um, wondering if it you know really works, you know it's it's mixed. It really depends on your zoom. Um, if you can believe it, you know each zoom is meant and tested for a certain criteria. Now that criteria is of course the dual core one gigahertz. Now the reason why we're able to overclock um, is because you can push the device beyond that. Now the reason the manufacturers don't recommend that and that's why you kind of void your warranty when you do things like this but um, the reason why people have this variance on oh it works at 1.7 or oh it doesn't work at 1.7 is because the system was tested to work at 1 and not beyond that so each chip um, and CPU GPU is going to be different um, because of this it's just the whole development and manufacturing of the chip you know it meets the 1 gigahertz what you paid for um, but whether or not it's going to go the extra if you overclock it yourself or not, you know, that's that's your own discretion and that's why there's going to be variances. So, it, you know, it's a plus if it does work at uh, 1.7 for you. We're going to find out if it works for me. Um, but if not, you know, just go back to 1.5 or 1.4 where it's stable. And it's still a great, great increase in speed. Now, um, this is very similar to the Riptide. Sorry for that long tangent. But very similar to Riptide, you have two things. You install it with Clockwork Mod um, Recovery. And um, basically, you have the boot image. You want to and the kernel. Um, so follow the steps in my Riptide article. I'll link that up. Um, the video is right there. Just follow the steps. Just download the two new files. Um, they're all provided in the link that's going to be attached to this. Um, you basically want to download the kernel and then download the uh, the boot image and you will be all set. Um, I'm not going to go a video over this just because I already did it before. Very simple steps and I'm going to install this and let's uh, and then quickly pan back and uh, see the results. Oh and actually you know when I did when, when downloading I realized something that this was a question that I get asked a lot. How to move files on your zoom? So say you downloaded the boot image and say you downloaded the kernel, you don't want to go on your computer and then transfer the files. How do you do it on your Zoom? You know, all in one device that's really, really powerful and amazing. All you need is some type of app or, or terminal if you want to type in the terminal and you know Linux really well. Um, for most users though, I recommend, excuse me, got myself a little lost. Um, an application. This is a uh, file explorer. It's very, very similar to any type of um, explorer where you're looking at your file system. You can see this is the SD card um, folder. And, you know, everything goes into downloads, right? So if we go, we search in downloads, we see here's um, the 3G off um, speed zip. So that's the boot image, and now we just got to find the kernel. And there's the full throttle kernel, and all you have to do is you press this operation button, and it will bring up this menu, and then there's a couple of options. What you want to do, now that you selected them in the arrows, is press this button right here. Um, this is the copy button, and I'll zoom in for you just so you can see it. And it looks just like a copy picture. So you just want to press that, and you'll see it like select, and all you have to do is go to that folder um, where you want to uh, see it. So of course, we all know, external is where our SD card is, and we can paste it in here. Let me just... Uh, delete these two just to show you that uh, 
it does work. We'll open up the operation. You can see there's a little X. So you can delete delete the files also on your Zoom. And then there's the paste button that's right here in the operation. So let's paste those files. And you can see those copied files are now pasted on. So this is a nice way to transfer files back and uh, forth on the Zoom. So I hope this was useful. Definitely check it out. It's really, really nice device. They have, it gives you a lot of flexibility to manage your files, organize them, copy, paste, rename, unzip, zip, all that fun stuff that you can do on a PC or a Mac. You have that functionality here on the Zoom. Really awesome. And so, successfully, I installed the 1.4.4 kernel, and uh, everything was running well for about... 10 minutes and then I had some force closes and then eventually my zoom stopped. Um, so the 1.7 gigahertz just uh, isn't for me. I set it back to 1.6 and everything is uh, has been has been great. Um, so with that in mind, let's take a look then at how I am setting my CPU at the different intervals. Um, you basically need uh, like a CPU performance governor. So there is this uh, application called Set CPU. I believe it's two ninety nine in uh, American dollars, and uh, you basically have the ability to um, set your CPU. You can see right now I'm at one point six gigahertz. Um, I can set it to uh, um, 1.7 if I wish or anywhere in between um, whatever works best for you and there's this uh, scaling which basically means how hard do you want the system to work um, interactive seems to be the best mode um, for those of you who do have zooms that are working fine on 1.7 um, please note um, don't keep it always in performance um, big dog says our big rush dog says keep it in interactive only performance for benchmarks he strongly advises it. I would uh, follow that advisement. Um, let's go to 1.7 uh, and performance just for this time being. And um, we'll just test it out real fast and let's see how it looks. Um, hopefully my zoom will uh, stay together just for this one test because it is blazingly fast at 1.7, might I add. It is uh, quite quite amazing and the frame rate um, for the video portions of the tests are you are noticeably um, better and it's more stable you can see it's running at a full 30 and now it stops so you can see the 1.7 just uh, isn't for me and uh, hopefully I can exit out of this without um, losing the crash you, you that that is a direct showing of the instability if you um, go beyond your zoom okay and we'll, we'll turn it back to interactive and uh, if we were to go back let me just uh, shut down that application since I s changed the CPU just gonna force quick quadrant And now we'll start it up again and I'll show you how it runs. Um, basically, it was running a solid third, you know, 30 frames per second um, through that corridor and up the steps into the flashy room. And everything, you know, was uh, quite, quite amazingly uh, frames per second better. Of course, there's just that instability. And I'll zoom more down here just so you can kind of see it's just not that steady 30 as you saw only for a brief uh, moment um, before the freeze but you can see it's running fine now not all zooms are created equal they're created enough to um, run equal for what they were uh, for the one gigahertz their stock but uh, 
some people just get more lucky than others when it comes to the overclocking portion. And you can see the score. Still nothing, uh, nothing to cry home about. That's uh, exceptional. So I uh, recommend, you know, set CPU highly if you want to control your clocking and so you don't go over the, you know, if 1.7 isn't working for you, 1.6 is uh, better, 1.5, or you can, you know, control it the way that you want. You know, maybe you want to set it to 1.6 for a certain time period, save your battery and set it back to uh, 1 gigahertz. Uh, you just have that control there and you can use it with said CPU. So, I hope this uh, was helpful. There's more to come. Of course, there's a couple features here with the USB tethering um, that supposedly is, is working quite well. And uh, so I'll make a video on that if I can get it working on my phone. And then also uh, the auto mount is uh, supposed to be enhanced and uh, better. So we'll take a look at both of those. Um, so look forward to that in future videos. As always, this is a pleasure. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, have a great evening.